Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome. So today I wanted to cover something I promised you I would cover in a video last week, or it's been a couple weeks now. Let's go ahead and pop the seat off this, this thing and uh, show you what I, how I got that, uh, my, my phone to display all the, the fun info on the bike. So the way you do that is with an OBD2 reader, reader, and I've got the Blue Driver, which is one of my favorite ones. I actually have two of these things. So, well, I don't have two Blue Drivers, but I have two OBD2 readers. The other thing you're gonna need is this adapter cable, because OBD2, traditionally, the pins on the OBD2 look like that. Now, this is a device that you can plug into any car made after, I think, what is it, like 1980 something or other, uh, and allows you to read from the ECU a bunch of information. Uh, now, traditionally, people don't really use these with bikes because bikes don't have this type of connector. What bikes have is this type of connector, which is, uh, it's like a six pin connector but let me get a little close up for you there. Yeah, this type of connector, it's a six pin connector. Now most bikes have this six pin connector, but the trick is that not, not every bike six pins is the same six pins. So as you can see on this KTM, these are the four pins that are live. On my Harley, it's a little different. On my Kawasaki, it's a little different. So you wanna make sure you buy the correct adapter for your bike. So this is an adapter that was specifically made for KTM. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Now, I will warn you, I did try a couple of different ones that claim to be built for KTM. And this is the one I was able to get working. So I will leave you a link to this one. It's actually a pretty high quality, um, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. <laughs> um, this is the one and it's a pretty high quality uh, adapter. I mean, um, I don't have much more to judge it by, but I did have another one that was also high quality looking. I ended up returning that one because it didn't work um, with, my KTM. Anyway, really all you have to do is plug this guy into here, nice and tight, and plug this into here, nice and tight. Now this, this connector is just underneath your ECU um, near the battery, and you can figure out a way how to seat this well. What I like about the blue driver is it's a Bluetooth device. And what's nice about that is your, your phone can just connect to it right away when it starts up. So we'll uh, shift the focus here to my phone. And this is uh, an iPhone 12, but it shouldn't matter. Blue Driver has um, a connector for, or a, um, an app for every platform, I believe. So once I start the bike, you'll notice that it's gonna say connecting. Actually, you don't have to start the bike, you just start the, uh, you just put the ignition on. See, it says connecting now. Probably should have, there you go, connecting, okay. And then, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this live data tab. And then you kind of have to let the phone know that it's in this landscape mode. All right, and now Put the bike in neutral. So 
So yeah, very, very cool that it can do all of that. And obviously I don't need the phone to be connected to the bike physically in order to do any of this. Let me zoom out just a little bit and I'll show you how I got this to work. So basically Blue Driver gives you a certain number of statistics you can read uh, from, from the device. I have essentially, these are the ones I've checked and I can uncheck them. This tab will show you what's supported based on what it's connected to. And I think that's super cool. Now, um, let me just read off some of the things that are supported. Fuel system status, um, engine load, engine coolant, those are checked for me. Um, Short-term fuel trim bank one, intake manifold, absolute pressure, uh, engine RPM, which is what I'm most interested in in this scenario. Vehicle speed, it's kind of nice to get the verification there because I have a speedometer, but you know, it's just nice to kind of make sure that they're in sync. <laughs> uh, timing advance for cylinder one, uh, intake air temperature, absolute throttle position, distance traveled while MIL is activated, um, com commanded evaporative purge, barometric pressure, that might be interesting, uh, control module voltage, uh, relative thr throttle position, relative acceler accelerator, pedal uh, position, and fuel injection timing. Now, you can also switch to this all to see like what all would be available. Okay, now that's not to say that the, the bike you've got this connected to, that the ECU would support this, but you get an idea how many different uh, parameters you have access to um, with the blue driver device. And I think that's really cool. Now, once you've selected all of that, you come here and you can actually uh, like click and move these around. It's not the smoothest, honestly, it could be nicer. And then in, in landscape mode, it kind of lays them out like this. This is what I ended up liking. Now I'm kind of still experimenting with it. I do have another one of these um, OBD2 readers and that one is a Wi-Fi one. I don't like that one as much because Blue Driver is just kind of like, it works 100% of the time. It, it, and, and that's super nice, right? It, like literally you connect it, the thing connects on its own and it's good to go. The Wi-Fi one, I find that I have to like start up the bike, go to my Wi-Fi settings, connect to the Wi-Fi, come back to the app, hit connect. And now I've spent like a few minutes doing that, which is not that big of a deal. The latency seems to be just about the same for both of them. The Wi-Fi one might be slightly less latency, which is pretty nice. But um, the Blue Driver is just kind of an all around more refined product, I feel like. Uh, I'll leave a link to the Blue Driver unit uh, that you, you, by the way, you, this, this device is basically the same price everywhere you look. I, I found I couldn't find a good deal on this. This is, I think it's like 99 bucks and it's just 99 bucks everywhere, uh, but it's, well worth it if you're working on your bike or if you're working on your car or whatever it is or your friend's car or something goes wrong anywhere you can pull this out and figure it out uh, i think it's uh, it's a it's a really great device and the app is phenomenal uh compared to the other apps um now most of the other ones don't actually come with their own app they rely on third-party apps like dashboard or blue whatever or other uh, dashboard is a cool app but it 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 Seems like it fell out of maintenance a long time ago. It was this really great app and then they just have made zero attempts to make it better in the past like five or six years. Uh, and, I, and I find that's a big shame because it, it had the makings of a really, really great setup. Uh, that's part of the reason why I switched to Blue Driver because they're, they're obviously maintaining this device and the app. Uh, so with this all set up, you, just, you can tidy up uh, underneath your seat and uh, always have your phone connected, essentially. Let me turn this off. So what I did is I just, um, I kind of put this underneath the ECU. There's a little bit of room for it right there. I try to tuck the cable in as much as I could. And then this, I kind of just laid it like that and you just have to kind of make sure you got to play with it as you're putting your seat down so that, you know, it gets out of the way. Now, this KTM 690 
really doesn't have a whole lot of room down here. Most bikes have a lot more room. And I haven't done the air mods or anything like that. I know I can open up a whole bunch of room down here. But um, if, if you're trying to get this done for other bikes, it's probably a little easier because you probably have a little bit more room. But this is ample room. I've been riding like this uh, for a couple of weeks and haven't had any issues. Um, I do see a couple of marks the seat has made in, in the blue driver casing here, but nothing, nothing tremendous. So um, now am I gonna keep this going? Honestly, I kind of feel like I'm not using it that much. Uh, it is nice to have, um, but uh, one of the things I, I've discovered is apparently on my iPhone 12, the uh, image stabilizer or whatever doesn't really like being on a motorcycle uh, that vibrates a lot. And this bike vibrates yeah, a fair amount, not too much. I mean, um, so I think I've been, I think it's kind of screwed up the image stabilization on my iPhone 12. So I'm not putting my, my, my phone on the bike that much anymore, um, which is totally fine. Uh, this is, this is not a long distance bike for me. I'm not commuting with it or anything. I'm just taking it out uh, for fun rides in the canyons and stuff like that and do it, uh, trying to learn how to do things that I normally wouldn't do on different bikes. Um, and I am going to take this out to the Supermoto track in a couple of weeks. Um, maybe I'll do a video on that. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but yeah, so if you've been thinking about putting an OBD2 reader on your bike, uh, what you will need is a reader just like the blue driver, you'll obviously need the app for that. You don't have to go with blue driver, you can find some other one, but I, this is the one I highly recommend. But more than anything, you need the correct adapter. You need a good quality adapter. Expect to pay about 20 bucks or so for a good adapter. You know, um, I wouldn't cheap out on that um, unless they have a good return policy. Um, and this is, this is a fairly nice one. Uh, and I've used this on this KTM and, my, and on my 390 uh, KTM as well. I pretty much have like three or four of these adapters now, one for KTM, one for uh, my Kawasaki, and one for Harley. Um, so anyway, uh, leave your questions in the comments. Uh, I'm happy to answer them. I don't know everything about this topic, and um, uh, there's probably a better way to do some of this stuff. Now, I did mention that I could do a gear indicator this way. The way that works, now the blue driver doesn't really support that, okay? But there are, like dashboard, the app kind of supports that, but not with the blue driver. So you, blue driver only works with the blue driver app. It doesn't work with the other apps. That's the only shortcoming that it has, I, I feel. It's not a big shortcoming because the app is pretty good. Now, if you want to get other apps to work, you're going to probably need a Wi-Fi one or a different Bluetooth one. Um, and I've got one of those. Um, and I can connect it to the dashboard app. And then what you do in the dashboard app, you enter all your gearing ratios, your tire size, and it calculates based on your RPM and uh, your gearing ratios, what gear you must be in to be going as fast as you're going. That's a pretty neat trick. It's probably not gonna be very accurate uh, instantly, but it will be accurate for you know, over a few seconds. So let's say you're running for like five or six seconds at the same speed. It should be able to accurately tell you what speed you're at based on the RPM you have and the gearing ratio that you have. That's a really clever trick. I haven't gotten that to, I haven't got that set up yet. I just haven't had time. Once I do, I might, I might demo it here. If you click that subscribe button, I'm sure once I post that video, you'll get a notification. I think that would be really cool to get. Um, I'm getting more and more used to this bike now. This is my, again, this is my KTM 690 SMCR. I'm getting more and more used to it. So I kind of now know what gear I'm in most of the time. And that hasn't been much of an issue for me, but it would still be really nice to know what gear you're in so you don't hit that shift up when you're in sixth gear on the freeway as much, um, which only happens obviously once, but kind of makes you feel like a fool. Um, Okay guys, thanks for watching. Uh, click that like button if you, if you like this video and would love to hear your comments and uh, see you on the next one. Bye.